Zaina Juliet, and you're watching Zaina Juliet, my friends. And I'm smiling because I feel so excited because my guest today is someone very special to me. In fact, I wouldn't be here talking to you if it were not for him. My guest today, and of course, many of you know who he is, Mr. Ron Garrett, the amazing Ron Garrett. And you know, I have to tell you, I'm sure you heard of Ron Garrett on Las Vegas Rock's radio show. Ron does so much in the industry and the entertainment, and we're gonna get to know Ron a whole lot better when we get back. We'll be right back after this. Hey, welcome to the Las Vegas Rock's radio show. I'm Ron Garrett. We're back here again on a Saturday at five o'clock live and in real time on KMZQ AM 670 Radio. And I just want to tell you what our mission is on this show. Our mission is to promote, encourage, and motivate local talent that appear in the showrooms, lounges, dinner clubs, show and piano bars in Las Vegas, plus the entertainment directors, producers, and marketing people who book them. So we're trying to get everybody booked. That's, that's our gig. Get everybody a job, keep the local vibe going. Better than a handshake. Awesome. Ron, it is so good to see you. Thank you, thank you. And you know, you know I love Mr. Ron Garrett. And what's very special about you and that I tell all my friends is all of the things that you have done for people in the entertainment in Las Vegas. You even have a radio show now that you promote artists and entertainers here in Las Vegas. And you've given us, artists, um, a platform and inspiration and promoting us. Ron, that is so wonderful. Let's talk about you, Ron. Let's talk about your show. Okay, first, sure. And then we we'll go backwards. But first of all, uh, I may have been instrumental in getting you started, but you had to have the talent to keep it going. You think so? You know, it's, it's one thing to, to go on television. It's another to stay on television. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Pardon my little voice right now. I have pretty much a laryngitis. Yes. And it's going to crack a little bit. But uh, you've been on over three years. Mm-hmm. And going on four. Um, actually, it's about six years. Six years. Well, see, I missed three. Well, yeah, I missed two or three years. But we too. all missed two years with this. Uh, with the COVID. With the COVID yeah. stuff. We missed two years. It's hard to know what year uh, things happen. I try to remember. Was that 21? Was that 20? It hard, it's, hard to, it's hard for me to remember what day I'm in. But the uh, Las Vegas Rocks radio show. Mm-hmm. Started just about a month before pandemic. Yes. We went on the air in January, two months before. And I had to go off in March mm. uh, because of the lockdowns. And uh, we came back on in July and have been on ever since. Mm-hmm. So we're in our third year now with oh. the show. But the show's all about talent like you. Yeah. The show is to support, motivate, give confidence to, exposure, uh, everything we can to help young and old, and any entertainers who are welcome to the show. Everybody's welcome. You do not have to be a star or a big name or a main room headliner to be on the Las Vegas Rocks radio show. You just need to be good and and local. And that is what I love about you, Rob, is you're you're giving everyone an opportunity and a chance. But when I first started the show, I couldn't get a guest because everybody was busy. They were working so hard. Yeah. And then pandemic came. Mm-hmm. We all shut down. But when I came back on, all the guests were available. Yeah, now you're overwhelmed. <laughs> because unfortunately, Las Vegas wasn't uh, didn't have the shows like they did previously, and we still don't yet. Yes. There's still a lot happening, preventing some of these shows from from opening and staying open in many ways. But before that, we go back to when I was a disc jockey in in the 70s and the 60s, and spinning rock and roll music in Los Angeles. Wow. On KHJ wow. Boss Radio. Wow! I, I did all. I did some of that, and the ad business, and a broadcaster. So, so many different things. 
mostly here in Las Vegas. Which reminds me, you are in the Hall of the, was it the Broadcast? The Net, Nevada Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Yes. I was inducted in uh, 2002. So I've been in there, well, 20, uh, was that 20 years now? Wow. Oh my goodness. And uh, no, I've been in there. And then a couple of other Hall of Fames, and mm -hmm. they don't exist, so <laughs> anymore. How does a Hall of Fame go out of business? I don't know, because it's... <laughs> <laughs> well, how's that happen? Actually, that's, that's yeah. amazing. I don't know, and I'm just kidding about all that, but they actually did have them, and they, mm -hmm. whatever happened, happened. But the Nevada Broadcasters Hall of Fame is 25 years now. Oh, wow. And uh, it's quite an honor to be involved with them. Yes. It is. And, well, and you need 20 years, 25 years in in uh, in the business mm -hmm. to be even considered to go in wow but i think i can make an exemption for you you think so i think so that would be something you know right? we could do that no i i, I still have some time no, a little <laughs> bit of time yeah a little time to go and like i mean I, if i can just get as good as you i'm still working you know, i'm a 40 year overnight success you know so <laughs> So you've been doing this for a while, uh -huh. and I remember you showing me some wonderful pictures of you with Sammy Davis Jr. Mm -hmm. and all of the great people that used to come to Las Vegas and perform, and there was Ron Gary. Every entertainer, everybody that's wonderful, yeah. you were in the middle when of When you moved to Las Vegas in 1971, and the town was uh, pretty mobbed up then, <laughs> And I was a nice okay. Italian boy from the East. Mm -hmm. I had no problem fitting in. Oh, okay. You know, and then a little bit crazy on top of that, you know. And that's what was necessary back in those days. But really? The mob was here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was run different. Vegas is quite different than it was then. Mm -hmm. I don't condone what the mob did, mm -hmm. you know, but what I do like about what they did to make Vegas uh, as, as famous as it is now, mm -hmm is the three things they paid attention to back in those days. And I think it's a lesson that could be learned today yeah. by some of you amateur marketing people at the hotels uh -huh. is to make sure that you have one, affordable food. Yes. Two, great customer service. But most of all, fantastic entertainment in every single corner of your property. Gary Biden, that one. When I was running the hotels, I made sure I had entertainment everywhere. Mm -hmm. On a bridge, on the staircase, <laughs> in a closet. Wow. Didn't matter. I wanted the place full of entertainment, which is what we did. And that's mm -hmm. the way it was. Today, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the entertainers are not treated with the respect I believe they deserve. I agree, yeah. Especially the, uh, the local entertainers mm -hmm. who come here, mm -hmm. live here, work here, fight every day to survive every day, here. Yes. And they need places to work, and the showrooms pretty much have changed everything they're doing now. It's much more difficult. Wow, that's... See, see, you're talking something that I can really relate to. And then so many friends that I've had that come on the show and people that I speak with, they say the same thing. And you know what? They also say they wish it was like it was when old Vegas. They all say that. They do. Yeah. Uh, but I have to remind, the Mafia was not the nicest of people, mm -hmm. you know, but they knew customer service. Everybody was mm -hmm. treated as a VIP, whether you were or not. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. So that's what made it happen. Everybody was, a, was a special. Uh, you weren't just a number right. like you are today. It, you know, there's no comps anymore. You know, it used wow. to be comps were free. We'd pass them out. Yeah, you want to go to the buffet? That's fine. Here it is. Or you want to eat here, you want to stay there. Today, you need to have 700 points to get $2 worth of comp food. Ten, how many points you got, Tom? 10 million points for Tom. Tom Hillary's here. Our, Tom's in the house. He's in the house, executive producer of the Las Vegas Fox Radio Show. All right. He's in the house. He knows. He goes out at night. Yes. And yes. Uh, they're just not there. You have to play. Mm. And they keep track of it. And if you're not a player and raise the points, then you get out of here. Wow. It's different. And, and these guys need to get out of the boardrooms mm -hmm. and to the casino floor. To the people. To see what the people are saying. Yeah. Every single day, Zaina, when I was at the Sahara and Circus Circus and, and uh, the Greek Isles and many others, I made sure I went around the hotel every day, said hello to everybody, try to get everybody's first name, learn about their family, their children. That is so awesome. Even their dog. You have to say hello to, <laughs> to the, the dogs. dogs. 
You have to. I got two cuties at home myself, along with my beautiful fiance Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Shout Tammy. Out to Tammy. She yeah. is beautiful, you know. She's a beautiful lady. Yes. She's a wonderful person. Yes. And she loves the little doggies. Oh. She that's, does. That's and I, I like the dogs amazing. too. Amazing. You know, that's really making me think. You know about what you're saying because I see it. I really see it, and that I think is why that you are you are responsible for so much great talent, and people respect you today. Um, well, it's everybody gets a fair shake, mm -hmm. and to me, talent was important. Mm -hmm. I treated them as if they were all mm -hmm. uh, Frank Sinatra or Celine Dion or that level of talent mm -hmm. and entertainment, no matter what. Right. You know, today they don't do it. Everybody that worked with me at the hotels got a room. Mm -hmm. If you were the star of the show, you got a suite. Mm -hmm. If you were the band, you're in the basement. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That wasn't true. <laughs> the Vegas artists, you know, this has been my thing. Never get the opportunities that the um, international artists would have. Mm -hmm. In order for them to get those opportunities and to be respected here in Las Vegas, they have to travel mm -hmm. outside do their career somewhere else, then come back to Vegas. Don't come to Vegas to be a star. It is frustrating. Right? Don't come to Vegas to be a star. Be yeah. a star, then come somewhere to Vegas. Somewhere else, and then come back to Vegas. But unfortunately, the, 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 the stars that come here to work here and live here mm -hmm. have to go out of town in order to make more money. You would not think that was the case. Wow. You would think that working in Vegas, working in the lounges and the showrooms, there'd be a lot of pay, a lot of money. Only if you're Donny Osmond. Oh, wow. You know, if you're not Donny Osmond, that's not the case. That's and uh, it's, it's sad sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's upsetting. And I don't want to bring up uh, Adele. <laughs> <laughs> but she, they, they offered the uh, chorus mm -hmm. the, that they wanted to back her up in the show, $100 a person. That's what they offered them. And then if they did that's the show, amazing. they couldn't stay to watch the rest of it. What? Yeah. That's some of the this reasons why. Yeah, it's shocking. Now, I don't know why entertainers do that. They shouldn't. Remember that these are your lifeblood. These are the people that make or break you. And you should be good to your fans. Well, I and your, say, and, your, and your people in the show. And Dell's always would say, too, even when he had his businesses in Los Angeles, you always treat your employees like gold. Absolutely. Because they will do so good for you. So it's like a give and take. You have to respect them. You know. I mean, I have hope for Vegas. I think. 50, I think I have hope too. Yeah, I think 50 years from now, Vegas will still be a fun place. Might to Might be sooner than you think. I hope so. Well, I have some things. Some we're crossing over, though. We're crossing over, but yeah. not, not the Rainbow Bridge. We're crossing over the the Sports Bridge. We are heading yeah. to another direction right now. The entertainment capital of the world, yes, it is and always will be, no matter what. Yes. They can say it's gone, but not really. Mm -hmm. But now the sports capital of the world. Now we're still, getting all these great teams. Right. That is entertainment. Yeah. It is yeah. entertainment. But we have some major league teams here, as everyone knows, and things are happening like just these last few weeks. Uh, the Legion Stadium has had uh, the uh, College Bowl. They've had the East-West game. They've had the uh, Pro Bowl and, of course, the, uh, mm. the, the great uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders. Then there's more coming. Yeah. More coming. Yeah. They keep talking about it, talking about tearing down the, the Tropicana. And really? Building a stadium right there for baseball, but the Tropicana is now going to be called Bally's, and Bally's is going to be called the Horseshoe. Wow. Change is coming to the Strip, the Change Mirage. No more volcano. Very shortly, and the uh, Hard Rock will build a world's largest hotel, uh, guitar-shaped hotel, right at the Mirage property. In, oh in lieu God. of the In lieu of the uh, volcanoes. Those are going to be gone. I like them. Did you? I like them. It was a fun thing to have volcanoes on this trip. Yeah, well. It was going to be a big giant guitar. <laughs> big giant guitar. And the Hard Rock Hotel. So you always learn so much about Vegas with Ron Garrett. And then Bally's will be at the top if they don't tear it down. And build, have, build a new Bally's. Like, this is all new to me. <laughs> all of it. Oh, this. I've been so out of the loop. Uh, because of the pandemic and everything, so I've been so out of the loop. Yeah. But this is so interesting. Well, there's a lot happening. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot happening. But you know what happened to the local entertainers where they are now? I call it the uh, the spaghetti circuit. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is where they are. The restaurants that are off the Strip. The, the old Las Vegas mm -hmm. is alive, but it's not on the Strip. 
It's at Prosecco's, it's at uh, Chianti's, it's at the Italian American Club, it's at SpaghettiOs, it's at Siena. Uh, I, the list is endless of Italian restaurants, on and on. Wow. This is where all our entertainers are, are, are working. Right now, they're singing as singles, or they have a duo with them or something like that, not a big venue. Mm. But that's where the jobs are, that's where the work is. And all the libraries around town as well are producing shows. The East Flamingo Library, the, the Summerlin uh, Library for the Theater, Library for the Performing Arts, mm -hmm. with stars like, uh, uh, like Rose uh, Kingsley there and uh, some people from Broadway and so on. So we have the arts. We have the locals have beautiful working. beautiful stages too, right? Like, yeah. But wow, throughout in, awesome. in, in local places. Mm -hmm. So now you get uh, a great Sinatra show starring one of the great Sinatra, like Gary Anthony mm -hmm. or Peter Pavone. And a, and, and a bowl of spaghetti and meatballs to go with it. <laughs> it's wonderful. Apropos. Though. You know, and it, you know that's a good thing and also because it, it, ex it let people explore more Vegas, I think, when they come. Well, you got to get out around a little yeah. bit, you know. And yeah. these places are nice. They fix them up nice. Food is good. It's a lot of fun. The Italian American Club, for instance, has more shows in there so than cool. Caesar's Palace does. Wow. They have shows, uh, three or four different shows every week. Wow. Always a great... Uh, act in the showroom. Good friends of mine are appearing there. Lou Gazzara, uh, Steve McCoy, and I can go on and on. Yeah, Gene Ferrari, remember Gene, you interviewed him once. Yes. He's, he's in uh, Florida right now. You always will bring great talent to this show. Lou Gazzara was Yeah, there. Lou Gazzara. Let's talk, what, what is Lou? You, I don't know if you guys remember, you have to see Lou Gazzara if you watch the episode with him. He is an amazing singer of all genres, especially opera. He sings everything. And it was an honor. I don't understand. It's just my job five days a week. And it was for multiple roles. Mm -hmm. So it was not just uh, one character. <laughs> Everything. He could go into character after character. To me, that is a true performer, a true Those are the great entertainers here yes. that uh, are about to break through, have broken through, mm -hmm. and now we're, and a lot of them are just working because the shows are not there. The lounges yes. have kind of shrunk to just a few, just a handful. Wow. I think it'll be a comeback. I do. I, Everything's in circles. Everything is cyclical. Everything. Yeah. I still everything come old back. is new again. Yes. I think so. So we're, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Ron, let's talk about some of the people yes. that you um, put on that stage, that you put in the spotlight here in Las Vegas. Because um, oh there's goodness. very many. Oh, Tom Hillary. Know, for... <laughs> <laughs> He's the first so guy I put in the spotlight who can't sing dance. Oh, come on. Or tell jokes. <laughs> I don't think that's <laughs> why. Yeah. But uh, the people, I, I go way back with these guys. I, yes. I, I say to people, uh, how many of you have met probably the three biggest entertainers there ever will be. Sinatra, mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. and Dean Martin. Who met these people? Oh, and Elvis, I'll make it four. I only know one person other than you. Yeah, well, I met them all because they were yeah. still alive. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and we're working in the showrooms, and we had access in those days. It wasn't like it is now. When you're in broadcasting or in media, you get invited to everything. No, that yes. doesn't happen. Oh. But I spent, remember spending time with Elvis Presley in a 15,000 square foot suite at the top of the now Westgate, then the Hilton, and before that, the International. Is that it, suite still there? Uh, yes, it is. There's two wow. of them. Wow. Yeah. There's two of them. One was for Elvis, and the other was for, uh, for Barbara Streisand. Oh. And they both two appeared Two of the greats. Two of the greats. Yes. And... Uh, I sat with Elvis, honestly I did, and he was just a superhuman being. He was an amazing he? person. He was wow. he was so humble and acted as if I was the star. And wow. he was the talker. I heard things about him like that. I wish I would have had the opportunity to meet Elvis. Presley. So I met Elvis, Frank, Dean, Sammy, Michael Jackson once. I don't know if you know that the you know that pink building behind Circus Circus? Mm -hmm. It's called the Adventure Dome. Mm-hmm. I was the corporate marketing director for Circus Circus Enterprise. We had seven hotels. Ooh. In 1993, we had been building it. We built that pink Adventure Dome behind the 
the hotel. Michael Jackson contacted through the uh, PR uh, department and through me mm -hmm. that they want, he wanted to bring his, his kids, his, his children fans to the, uh, to the property he had just opened. And well, you know, there's always a lot of concern, security and all that. He mm -hmm. says, let me just buy it out for the day. Mm. How fun. So he did. He came, he brought out uh, the Adventure Dome, still going on behind the circus for the entire day. Uh, and I escorted him and four youngsters that were with him and of course security and all that around the entire place every ride every attraction oh wow everything like that it was it was a wonderful yeah. day I'll never forget it yes and uh, that's my Michael Jackson story it's fine well he's always a fun person my Frank Sinatra yeah. story is he bumped into me in the hallway and said get the hell out of the way kid that's my Frank Sinatra story <laughs> Then he kept walking, and, and you know, that was about it. But I did shake his hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's totally true. Get out of here. Get out of here. You know, I didn't know me. He had an entourage bigger than your entourage. <laughs> Mine has shriveled all the way down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember watching you perform. Uh, I know you're performing again. You're going to make tours. You got tours coming up. Soon, soon. I'm starting to view in you now. Okay. What's new? I've created a TV series mm -hmm. called Star Child of the Seven Realms. In short, it's ST7R. <laughs> but it's a horror, thriller, fantasy, um, slash, in a sense, musical. Because mm -hmm. what it is, is about these artists all around the world are having communications with extraterrestrials from, from other okay. worlds. But the communication is they're training us to find the right frequency to save the planet from evil. So you have, you know how you hear fallen angels mm -hmm. or all the things that's fallen, uh, wickedness on the earth, hate, um, deceit, murder, all the things that we have in the world is, it's because there's these demonic jumpers that jump our souls and try to, um, overpower humanity That's pretty deep. and it's been going on for quite some time mm -hmm. but a lot of it is based off of real events you know but these star ch ch childs star child plural and singular are working together with the ETs to fight evil but the ETs have a secret code so they have to find and cipher the frequency and all together the musicians on the um, show are fighting this but yet they're teaming up together see the star childs have to all connect and when they connect they got to cipher the code once the code is ciphered um, they have the power they all have certain gifts special powers they have the power to cast out demonic forces to the pit of the darkest um, purgatory of uh, the universe. That's a series. Mm -hmm. It's seven realms, though. So my my role is to heaven. So she's able to reach and go through all seven realms of hell and heaven. If you can go through all seven realms of hell, then what's next? That sounds like a plot for Tom Hillary to think about on another movie he's making. Yeah. Don't steal the idea, Tom. <laughs> Are you guys ready to cut this song? All right, let's see. They're coming for me. They're coming for us. We'll crawl on the ground beneath your feet! Jumpers cannot jump me.
pretending that we're disconnecting because you set this meeting up, so we're going to continue this meeting. Or else. centuries ago on planet Earth lived a warrior princess with magical power. And no one, I mean no one, has ever seen her in this form before. You think you're gonna toy with my brain? Zombie heads insane? Tick tock tock, tick tock tock. -tock. Revelations ticking on the clock. Tick tock tock, tick tock tock. The souls are cold, cold devil is hot. Your walls can't confine me. to help save the Earth. Permission to go back to base. That's crazy. I'm ready. Hands in the air, hands in the air, one love is why we're here! It's a Z-Bay.